So, uh, what do we have up first? We have, uh, not Anthegos, we have Elementary OS. Um, and we're going to be going by, and if you want to follow along, we are looking, or we, we're going to be mentioning the file name. The file name. Um, it's in a... Hey, how did you acquire all of these again? Uh, they're in like a folder <laughs> in the distribution somewhere. Once you download them, you get... And just copy the file. Yeah, like yeah. I, I think each distribution has like a different place that they put it in, like in uh, slash user slash share slash wallpapers or um, some of those places. Yeah, so I th- they should be in that, some sort of some, folder inside it. Yeah, or if and, not, uh, you could follow along. Just oh, I'm using Antergos right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just open up like the wallpaper changer that you have. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, this is um, elementary OS, the Jazz Hands distro, <laughs> and we <laughs> can't get over why you call it the Jazz Hands distro because it's all Jazz Hands, Jazzy. Ah, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. Anyway, anywho, yeah. So we have two dot JPG. <laughs> you call it JPG, JPEG, <laughs> JPEG. <laughs> Uh, joint photographic something something group forgot that's the meaning of JPEG so top of my head I can remember graphical image graphic graphic <laughs> for GIF yeah anywho first up number two <laughs> first up number two <laughs> okay so it's like a some <laughs> micro or, or should we go like um like general impressions first of the entire distro of the entire like set yeah of why not papers. because right. for elementary they do love their nature <laughs> <laughs> like you were mentioning earlier oh very earthy very earthy a lot of browns blues greens yeah uh, generally colors relaxing to the eyes uh, especially green like you know those studies that you only should only stare at a computer like 20 minutes at a time mm-hmm. then make your make sure your eyes will readjust by looking at something that is like at least 20 feet away yeah. or looking something that is green. Right. So what we're saying is that um, Ubuntu Mate is cool because it's green. <laughs> at least it's already green. Yeah. Or like the Zib- or, or Zubuntu is very blue. Mm-hmm. So like those colors have... The- yes. It relaxes the eye. But more importantly, the, your eye muscles, because you're looking at a particular screen for a long time, say hours on end, imagine... Your manual focusing a lens, and yeah. you're just holding that focus for three, four, five hours. Oh, okay, yeah, so that makes sense. You're gonna feel it. Your eye muscles are gonna feel that strain. Right. That's why we tend to happen is we lift off our, our glasses. For my case, I have glasses, and then you pinch the middle of your eyes because that's your eye muscles are getting strained, and then you your temples get you get a feel of like pain there. Yeah. So what you do is you have to constantly readjust focus of your eyes from time to time. And it helps to look at something green. It helps to look at some or it blue. Helps to l- gender- well, they're they're side by side in the color spectrum. And in some languages, they're the same color. <laughs> <laughs> and so, expect a lot of greens and blues and browns in elementary. First up is number two, which is a macro shot of some leaves. Do you know what leaf is that? An elementary leaf. <laughs> <laughs> There's an elementary plant. <laughs> which is it is what it is. It's a lot of bokeh. And so, yeah, like because it's, it's probably uh, close-up photography. Yeah. More technically known as macro right. photography. That's, that's, and that's like a running theme in a lot of these uh, desktop wallpapers. A lot of desktop wallpapers use macro shots. Macro shots. Because uh, the thing is, some desktop wallpapers, uh, well, some people, when they use their desktop, they just junk everything in there. Yeah. And if you have too many things busy happening in your desktop, that's additional clutter for right, and to an already cl- cluttered desktop. Like I'm saying this for casual users, because I'm sure your dear listener <laughs> have a very organized desktop, or from time to time clean it up. Yeah, that's what I do. I, like, oh, it's that time of the week, clean up the desktop, yeah. put them in the respective folders and whatnot. So, bokeh pretty much automatically creates a negative space. Right, while at the same time being sort of visually interesting. Exactly. Right, next up, we got. 16. Sky. Yeah, not again. JPEG. JPEG. Yeah, again, JPEG. blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> a lot but of white. But, yeah. then white is, um, but then white as a color, though, like if you focus on white too much, that, that strains the eyes. That strains the eye, but when you have something like 
most icons, especially icon packs, I'm not sure about elementary's icon pack these days. I think it's tend to be yellow. I, I I'm not know. sure. But the thing is, if you have a white and then a contrasty color beside it, like say a black or a dark, mm-hmm. it will stand out. Yeah. So having a predominantly white and blue pastel type background, it means the dark colors will contrast and pop out. It means you could easily locate the files, the names, and all that. Right. So form the function. Then the next one is the default. I the think. default. Ninety four. Ninety four. <laughs> Ninety four. The JPG, <laughs> which is uh, stones and like the ocean in the, the back. ocean crashing, probably shot in high noon based on the absence of shadow. Yeah. Like all of the shadows are below, which is interesting because usually photography 101, they won't, t- they, they will tell you not to shoot during noon. Like, eh, shoot anytime you want. Work yeah. with the light. That's my. <laughs> yeah. But then like, I, I guess because you have to take into consideration again that, um, you got stuff on your desktop. Exactly. So like once you start putting visually interesting shadows, that takes away that from. That takes away. The sort of having mm-hmm. icons on your desktop thing. Yep. And that's the default. And yeah, so usually yeah. when you pop up elementary, you don't have any icons. Probably most likely three trash, file manager, yeah. and home. Yeah. That's it. So eh, it's relatively empty and immediately gives you that impression of, ah, oh, it's quick clean. And like, ah, oh, the ocean. I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed. <laughs> I'm relaxed. <laughs> right, next up, 164. <laughs> Desert. Is it a desert? It looks like a desert. Uh, with a little bit of lens flare on the exactly, top Exactly. That. That's what I'm going to say. Do note the simple in, uh, use of lens flare. Pretty much shooting around F16 or like a low opening. Yeah. Because it's not it's circular. It's like wicked bright. Yeah. It's not circular as well. But in a decent exposure, because look, the wind, this gust, the gust of the wind can be, can be seen. I'm looking at, I'm looking at this from an angle, but. <laughs> You see? Ah, uh, yeah. Like on the ridges of the dunes. So again, uh, what I do no- want to note about this one is how empty the lower part of the frame is. Because that's where the dock goes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and just a nice, nice, like the line is like composition 101. If you're going to do a landscape, put it either in the lower third or upper, upper third. third. Yeah. Yeah, so it's either you give the uh, you give the ground room to to yeah, show more of the ground or show or more of the, the sky. sky. So composition one one. Like that's the thing about desktop wallpapers, they're composed absolutely like not technical. Or it's very typical. It's very elementary. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, fine. Ten points to Gryffindor. <laughs> uh, it's and and. It's nice because if it's too many jarring, too many things happening in the frame, you know, again, it takes away from the function part of what a wallpaper is. Like this one is an example of something that, you know, when you do your mix up or whatnot, still gonna have that, you know, space for you to tinker around with yeah. your desktop. <clears throat> Alright. All right, All right. Next right. up we have a seashell. Wait, that was 168. <laughs> seashell. Uh, horizon's not tilted properly, but it's okay. Yeah. Or probably just the shape of the wave, but still distracting. Like, on the beach, how the waves flow in. Mm. Eh, but you know, what's central focal point? That's it. Yeah. It's a, it's a <laughs> shell. It's a shell. It's a thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is like if you say want to put your dock on the right side. Hello. Well, I put my dock on the left side. Yeah, so. I mean, like me too. I always put my dock on the left. But I'm just thinking about like the getting into a little bit of aesthetics here, like the yeah. balance, right? The balance because um, because the well, the sun is obviously to the right of the frame, right of the frame, based on the shadow. Because there's a big shadow there. So, like, what does that do to the balance, right? It isn't a very traditionally balanced mm-hmm. sort of image. Like going back to uh, going back to one six four. This is a fairly balanced image, fairly even balanced though, image, even though it's sort of humped on the on on the right side. Mm-hmm. Even though more of, more of the stuff happens on the right side because of the distribution of the colors. Mm-hmm. And you have lens flare on the left of the frame. Right of the frame is your contrasty dark area. Yeah, so, shadow area. So balances them up. Yeah, because there's something visually interesting on yeah, either exactly. side. Exactly. Whereas one, in one six eight, it's like everything visually interesting is on the left. Yep. 
So I would, I would think that if I were to use this, I'd have my dock on the right. That way it sort of balances it out. Exactly. And oh. then you could put your bar. Yeah. On the bottom. Yeah. Cause you, there's the waves up there. Well, maybe it's not going to be distracting anyway, eh. but still moving on. 173. Uh, <laughs> leaf. Maple yeah. leaf to be exact. Low angle shot, high depth of field again, high, large opening. Probably like 1.4. 1.4 most likely. <clears throat> or if you're using macro lens. That doesn't look like a macro lens. It doesn't though. look like a macro lens. It though. just looks like, like a really wide mm-hmm. opening. But again, that's the thing about bokeh. <laughs> Easy to just, once you put your icons there, easily be seen. Yeah. Instant negative space. Wait, so for the people that don't know, bokeh is unfocused light in the background or the foreground. Yeah. Just unfocused light in a photograph. Yeah. And you, you get this if you have a high f-stop or uh, a wider At opening. At least so 2.8 low. and above. But that's not a high f-stop. A high large f-stop. opening. Yeah, large opening. So 1.4, 2.8, 2.8 1.7, yeah. 0.95 if you can afford $10,000. <laughs> yeah, so like the effect of, of, of a wide opening is you have... Like, uh, only a very small section of your entire photo is like crystal clear yeah. and the rest of it is it's all like blurry. blurry, sharp and creamy and all that. Yeah. So that's bokeh. And, and a lot of desktop wallpapers really like to use that. Um, but then with Antergos, it's interesting because they have like really, I, I prefer their selection to be yeah. honest. Cause um, I think, um, I w- when we were looking at these before, like it's well curated, the one for elementary. Yeah. It tends to be all about nature. Yeah. It's it's a uh, well it it's very much in line with what elementary wants. What elementary to be. yeah the part of the packaging yeah, if I may. It's it's about it's about creating an open walled garden or whatever the hell. You <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to be OS we're, we're trying to be OSX but not really. Like, <laughs> uh, right next up we have elementary default dot jpeg. Yeah this 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 isn't the default though right? I have no idea. I know I know the rocky one is the default one. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Right. So anyway, elementary dash default is a mountain thing. Well, shot at dusk. I uh, know. Most likely. It's a moonrise. Yeah, it's a moonrise. So yeah, no stars so. yet. Relatively bright. Either way, again, see how the frame was like lower third of the mountains, more of the sky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lower, lower third of the image, more of the sky. Central focus point is the moon. Central focal point is the moon. It's so again simple and very clear upstairs and uh, upstairs, upper third. Yeah, Th- that's what I tend to think. Good way wallpapers is with not again razor sharp composition. <laughs> I yeah. mean, uh, very elementary <laughs> composition, and leave room to have things on it. Right, so next up, horseshoe, horseshoe bend, bend sunset. sunset. Hmm, purple like is the golden hour at its finest. Pinks and purples. Now we come with a trickier composition because you're using a circular element. Right. And then what usually tends to happen is you don't put the curving area at the middle. Yeah. Put it like on the left or on the right. Yeah, so this is slightly to the right. Like those familiar with the Fibonacci spiral. <laughs> lots of lo- lots of problems with Fibonacci, but I'll let it slide. No, it's what it's called, right? The conch shell or the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's there is there lot there are lots of problems with that, but I'll let it slide. How come? What? I don't uh, know. It's just, it, I know it's what it's called. Yeah, but then it's like the pure mathematics of it doesn't necessarily mean Oh, it's going to create the curve. Yeah, because oh, okay. because the curve is human beings interpreting quote unquote what like like how to arrange the Fibonacci numbers in such a way that it creates something that's visually pleasing. So, is it in the sequence itself that the quote beauty comes from, or is it because we are applying our own aesthetic sensibilities to a set of numbers that um, whose whose only property is the next one is the previous two added together. <laughs> Like <laughs> I'm just using it as a noun. <laughs> For your purposes, it's just the noun. It's what's name. What is the name? All right, next up. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Still one dwell. Uh where the hell is Horseshoe Bend? We should Google. Or Duck Duck for this matter. I don't know yeah. where Horseshoe Bend is. Probably in the US. Or maybe it's just making reference to the horseshoe. Or maybe it's just making reference to like the the curved element. That's what makes this particular photo interesting. It's like you have the curve of the river, 
And the curve of the river is just such a stark contrast to the jagged... Jagged rocks. The jagged rocks and stuff. And I really like this color because, like, remember, um, there was a time that I that I had this obsession with shooting with expired film. Mm-hmm. And this was this was sort of the color palette that ended up happening or that, that ended up popping out hmm. because of the degradation of some of the blues and greens. Yes. Uh, that is what is called technically called reciprocity failure. Right. Which is a different podcast on its own. Uh, is it in Oregon or Idaho? I think Oregon. Oh, Horseshoe Bend, Arizona. <laughs> So none of, none of the above. Which explains the, the desert looking. Yeah. Next up. Huh. Jonas Nilsson Lee. Interesting thing is, properly cited artist. A proper, proper, rah, properly credited. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's something also that I noticed. Well, something that I noticed about Antergo specifically is the credits are in the title no, of... Elementary or Antergos? Antergos. Oh, okay. Because like these guys, you know, the first few ones were just a bunch of numbers. Right. Yeah, um, and I think like the some of the Ubuntu's have like credits Proper in them as well. Credits. Uh, but this 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 one is like a boardwalk. And, is it? I don't know. Like or uh, one of them? Not porches or benches. What's it called? Port boat? Where you? Yeah, yeah. Where 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 they dock? Yeah, where they it's dock. Like, it's a dock. Wood, <laughs> like wooden planks and a lot of bokeh again. I really like, like I really like bokeh on water. Yeah, it's really cute. It's like. <laughs> Huh? Again, oh. very huh, relaxing. Yeah, and the, the it's a it's what, what, what's cool about this is it's a fucking macro shot <laughs> that is composed like a landscape. <laughs> yeah, lower third, but actually still a bit of curve, give equal space, and and even even like the blue of the water can fill in as. "Quote unquote sky, sky. <laughs> and the brown of the, the wood, ground. The yeah, I find this interesting. I should use this. Like, I'll <laughs> take this and put it on like a wallpaper or something. Next up, Lake Tahoe colors. You, you know what I I always recall Lake Tahoe is because that's where they usually do like X Games wakeboarding. A mm. lot of a lot of water sports happen in Lake Tahoe. Right, because so it's I've never big, seen actually big. Lake Tahoe that looks like it was from a beach, like serene. Yeah, like this one, the the movement of the water can be seen, right, and you could see the ground. But I usually know Lake Tahoe as like very dark water. Yeah, because of course it's always the cloudy days that when they shoot there or whatever. Hmm. But yeah, the nice thing about Lake Tahoe is in the morning. Uh, but what's weird about this though is like your horizon line is right in the middle, right smack in the middle. <laughs> That's it. You. Uh, to taste, I guess, but this one is right smack dab in the middle. Yeah. So you're cutting the frame across. The horizon is straight. There's actually a bit of distortion, but for those who want, like that's I that's one of the things I hated when I learned about photography distortion. Yeah. So like if, if you're shooting with like a twenty eight and eighteen. Yeah. So faces get smushed or noses get bigger. Yeah. Eyes bulge. But my my, my the thing I didn't like is at first I didn't notice about it and I don't care. Right. But now, oh my God, they could see it everywhere. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can totally see that the the horizon isn't the horizon line isn't straight. I know it isn't because of the curvature of the Earth. Not yet at that level. Not yeah. altitude and at that level. Not yet. Yeah, it's it's to do with, with the lens characteristic. So, like, um, if you have like, like if 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 you guys see those, uh, like, um. Photos of bands in the '90s that have this extreme fisheye. Yeah, or skateboarders. Or skateboarders That's right? an exaggeration of distortion. Yeah, so, skateboard videos. Yeah, so like um, with with some like wide angle lenses, uh, you you don't get that much distortion, but it's it's there, mm-hmm. and it's noticeable if you straight lines. If you yeah, if you have straight lines, or if you use landscape. Photography can, review sites always do the brick wall test. Oh yeah, because the lines can be distinctly seen. Yeah. So yeah. when you take one unedited, look, there's a barrel distortion. <laughs> yes, I remember. Like, you know that I love the twenty eight. Yeah. But I always found it difficult when I was shooting like landscapes. I found it really weird. I was like, huh, 
how come I can't get the horizon straight? <laughs> Do I suck as a photographer? <laughs> like, nope. It's just curving. Like it's it's two clicks in Photoshop, especially if you have a digital. Especially if you have a digital camera, it's like two clicks in Photoshop. Yeah, it's in, pinch it, right? Yeah, and then in GIMP or the others, it's simple slide adjustment. Yeah, for GIMP and Darktable, simple slide adjustment. So it's not like that's why lens designers tend to not overtly correct for that. Mm, because it's really because easy it's nowadays. Because it's easy to like just have a profile loaded. Like I remember Darktable, I was downloading Sony profiles mm. for the lenses and like just so to easily correct it. But next we get leaves. Leaves. And it is what it is. Leaves. Leaves on a very Instagram shot. <laughs> right. See, like there's a bit of a fade. Yeah. Um, and um well the 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 balance of this is sort of like the way a balance it's sort of like the way that balance in a baroque painting works mm-hmm. where you have a lot of negative space but then this negative space sort of takes a lot of quote unquote weight yeah and your the the darkness on the right even though it's more even though there're more things going on because it's blurry and because it's sort of darkish mm-hmm. it doesn't take as much it weight it doesn't take yeah so you have a balanced image. Yeah. And the and, and the plank gets wider as it moves to the left. Yep. So that's what I find interesting about this, like oh. 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 And again, very simple. Easy for you to just put things in there. Yeah. Right. Um next living I have no idea what it is. Livingstones.jpg. Um I have no idea what what those are. They look like watermelon stones. <laughs> They look like watermelons. Do yeah, they? they do. Well, I'm pretty sure they're absolutely small. Because again, macro. Macro, yeah. Uh, bokeh, like nothing else. Now, this looks like it was shot with a macro lens. Yes, yeah, it looks like it was shot in macro lens, extremely close up. I don't know what that is, actually. <laughs> but mm. notice how the photo, like on the left side of it, upper left to be specific, perfect place to put the icons. <laughs> <laughs> and next up. Mr. Lee dot JPG. I have no idea what the characters are. Like it's a lantern, Japanese lantern from yeah. a window. Well, it looks Chinese though, more Chinese. Is it? Where's my glasses? <laughs> but then, like, because if, if it's Japanese, then it's it's kanji, right? Either um, way, this is a great photo. It's like it's 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 a nice little Instagram. Yeah. It's it's Instagrammy. But what's cool about it is there's that little splash of red. I was about to say that the splash of red, and then white lantern black background what did i say earlier white on black always works or black on white yeah and when i was in when i was in the third grade and learning how to code html the thing our teacher told us was when in doubt uh just use black white and red <laughs> and that always looks good <laughs> <laughs> pretty much my father's logo in his previous company yeah just black white and red always looks good so um, if anybody out there can read the characters on the lantern, just tell us. Because it, it, it could be like, you fucking moron, this should have been green. That way you can relax your eyes. That's, that's <laughs> in my head canon, that's what it says. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> like, this is, uh, you know, what if that character just said, this is a wallpaper? <laughs> <laughs> or it could be like, like those tattoo artists that like that that, that put like absolute nonsense on you, know, like yes, yeah, so this means you know peace, unity, and mm-hmm. like whatever. And then but if the an Chinese actual means, Chinese person reads it, it's like oh yeah, water show my <laughs> monkey. Like <laughs> okay, oh you're into water monkeys and uh, dim sum, <laughs> so much so that you have a tattoo of their characters. Uh, next up, Paris. La Tour. Uh, this is Eiffel too whatever. bright, actually, for my tastes. Yeah, well, it's the Eiffel Tower. It's the Eiffel Tower. Paris La Tour Eiffel. This can't do Paris, can't do French accent for nothing else. So, so these, uh, well, it, it, this is one of uh, one of the images that sort of doesn't fit with the overall theme. That the you're overall going for. theme. Like is a, elementary a French distro? No, no. Voyager is the French yeah. distro. But then, like. Um, it, it was all very sort of nature centric, very nature heavy. Yeah, and right? then you have, and then all of a sudden structure. you have, yeah, man made structure, and well, the one right before it, the uh, the lantern. Yeah, but technically, the thing is, it's an iconic landmark. 
Yeah, like, it's I an guess. iconic part of human achievement. So maybe if you're craving for you know memories of Paris, <laughs> <laughs> have it up and whatnot. It's not a bad, bad image. It's just personal aesthetic preferences. I prefer something softer. Right. Unless yeah, it's a, a party, it, unless it's a, you're photographing a band, mm. like dark contrast, uh, deep contrasty, like hard shadows. That's the term. Hard yeah. shadows would be better, but I don't know. They, elementary tend to shoot a lot. Like some of these wallpapers, pe- some of them are shot at high noon. Mm. Weird. <laughs> like no shadow at all. Yeah, no shadow at all, or deep shadows. Like, look at the blacks in that thing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, next up, um, oh. Ryan Schroeder. Yeah, that's the mountains. It's the mountain one again, huh? Next, ooh, the coast. The coast. Uh, looks like northern Batanes. Yeah. Um, so you got it's it's another like landscapey shot with a sort of fence with barbed wire. The thing is, landscape photography one one mm-hmm. always have a foreground interest. Right. Exactly that. The two yeah, stumps, sort of, the two uh, fences, and barbed wire. Yeah. Well, this is actually a really good image because it. Uh, it is. The the sort of basic rules of landscape photography: you have your foreground and you have natural borders. Mm-hmm. So, like, you sort of see the mountains protruding from the side. Mm-hmm. A lot of nice detail in the sky. The cloud mm-hmm. definition has been is can be seen, and uh, of course, again, the foreground image. It's actually quite charming, to be honest. Uh, People might find this a bit cluttered. Yeah, it is. Well, personally though, like I, for for the people that don't have anything on their desktops at all. Yeah, those who always keep it minimal. Yeah, because like, I like doing that. Like, there's nothing on my desktop. Um, for, at least my daily driver. <laughs> like it's yeah. just th- there's nothing there because the file manager is just a just a click away, right? For me. Uh, like I said earlier, what happens is what I do is I put all the downloads on the table. Yeah. And table on the desktop. Yeah, yeah. And then like, okay, cleaning time, put on designated. Like that's how even my table is. My table when I'm working, clutter does all hell. But before I end the work day, okay, clean, put this back in <laughs> at the place. Ha. Huh. The desktop is a reflection of you. Alright, next up, tunnel. And it's actually not a tunnel. <laughs> yeah. It's like a man-made log, or no, um, it's a hole or barrel. But again, note the bokeh. Yeah, well, uh, this is actually like visually interesting. It is, like you do know one of the things that I'm not a big fan of with like the photographers. Mm-hmm. There are some who are bokeh aficionados. Yeah, like yeah. they will describe this bokeh as very harsh. Okay, because look, it's not just flowing. You can see the distinct circles. The bokeh balls. Oh yeah, huh? Shit, I didn't notice that. Yeah, looking at it from an angle. So it's not God gonna damn. be. It's not gonna be soft. What I do appreciate is that minute foreground detail. Is that a dandelion or right? Uh, it, yeah, I don't know. What I find then, cool though is, mm-hmm. um, it's like th- this is a study on roundness mm-hmm. because, like, obviously the. You obviously have like the barrelly thing, and then like in the in the background you have very harsh bokeh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which to me, to be honest, just use it properly in context. Like if you know your lens characteristic is this, yeah. use it for that purpose. If you have something that just la 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 glosses over, like you see in most wedding photos, right? Use it for that. Yeah. Right? So again, right lens for the right job. Yeah. I think this was the right lens for the right job. Yeah, because of the the circles, it's very yeah. circular, very round. Um, It'd be nice though if I was going to use this as a wallpaper. Just put all the icons in the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Instead of extreme left, flush left, or flush to right, just put them in the middle and just like mm. la 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 or something, <laughs> <laughs> or shape them into a butterfly. <laughs> Have the butterfly near the, Have little, the butterfly. little flower right at the <laughs> foreground. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, urban dream dreams. <laughs> Urban Dream. Uh, is this a bench? I have no say? idea, dude. It's an interesting thing about photography. Again, is that it's always a partial truth, and even so, the truth and the partial truth in front of you can be hard to decipher. Right. And this one is one of them. Is it a bench? Is it a table? Is it steel grates? Yeah. Uh- just seems as though the point of this is to have as much bokeh as possible. And silver uh, 
and the silver of course again because it tends to translate as white so yeah icons will pop up yeah and there's that um Actually, uh, before this, we were looking at some of the, the Linux Mint wallpapers, and there was one that looked like a fairly okay landscape shot that was just, like, blurred. Like, <laughs> just put a whole lot of blur on top of it. It's like, I would imagine it was a properly composed and well-made image. And then, you know what? I want this to be a wallpaper, but I find it too distracting. Let me put Gaussian blur. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. And it, that, that's also what this kind of looks like. Because again, very like wide opening for your lens, and I'm, I'm thinking this this probably only has like an inch and a half of stuff that's clear, and the rest of it is all blurry. Mm -hmm. So uh, next up, water lily. Again, bokeh flowers, and look look at note the bokeh. Well, fine macro lenses, or if you shoot really close, mm -hmm. the bokeh tends to be better. Right, and this is an example of that. Like, just. La 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 la. <laughs> Creamy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's a, it's it's a water lily. It's a water lily. Uh, the thing is though, one of one of the biggest uses of photography when it was starting out was to document plants. Right. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> we're still we're still doing we're at still it. Still doing that. And finally, wild night. Ah. The, this is the most like OS OS X OS X C because it's got like stars stars mountains and there's massive light pollution pollution at the right side of the frame yeah it's probably from a nearby town or city or this could be like at sunset and taken from a high place and, and taken from a high place no he's he took it from a lower place because the trees are forming a line yeah huh. and then pointed it extremely high. But again, you have a lot of detail, like a lot of negative space on the sky. Right. Nice place to put icons. <laughs> <laughs> and not too distracting. Yeah. Tends to be like, ten usually for elementary, a lot of it is really extremely bright. Yeah, again, yeah. They, they shoot when the sun is like directly yeah. above them. This one is, the sun is directly nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> or sort of to the right. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's it's the most OSXy. I'm not sure though. Are those planes, the lines, mm. clouds, minute clouds, going that fast, or the International Space Station? <laughs> In some of some of astrophotographers I know actually try to track where the International Space Station will pass mm -hmm. and try to photograph it, include it in the image. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, like for their Star Trail or their Milky Way photos. Hmm. Because like this, this couldn't have been a very wide. This couldn't have been a very long exposure because yeah. the stars aren't streaking yet. Yeah, it's not. They're not streaking yet. That's why I'm thinking those lines are from planes. Mm. Yeah. So for the for the for the people that don't know, you can leave your lens open. Oh, I just realized. What? Downstairs. Downstairs. Down at the bottom, you can see the EXIF file. Two eight thir one thirtieth of a second. Oh. <laughs> are the other do the others have the EXIF file? Yeah. Uh, they no, do. not not oh, no. not all of them. Okay. That's the only one that had an excess file. Oh, this one, one sixteen thousand and three point five. Ah, huh. Huh. Anyway, let's. But anyway, let's, let's, I'll, I'll let's, for let's, our own purposes later. <laughs> yeah, let's look at that. Well, let's look at, look at that again. A thirtieth of a second. So what? One thirtieth. Yeah. But that isn't a plane. Mm hmm. That isn't a plane. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> that isn't a plane. Ton ton ton. Mm. Oh, nice. That person stopped down. Three point two opening. Uh, where, where was the Urban Dreams? Does it have... Does it have EXIF? No. No. Oh, man. I can't see the... <laughs> That's always nice. Like, shooting at 1.4 1. 1. 4, if you don't have one of the higher-end lenses, like at, the, at your widest opening, mm -hmm. the photo doesn't tend to be sharp. Yeah. But when you shoot, say, stop down, so say your opening is 1.4, you shoot at f2.2 .2 or 2, that creates for a sharper image. Right. Then, because everything just balances out at five point six and f eight. Like yeah. I could get a ten thousand dollar lens, compare it to a fifty dollar lens, shoot them both at f eight. Hardly any difference. Right. But you pay ten thousand dollars because at point f ninety five, it's it can open to f point ninety five, and you could still retain detail. Right. Right. So, but this one stopped down. Yeah, this one looks like it was shot wide open. Yeah. I'm well, guessing with uh, the wild night. Yeah, it's f two point eight. Guessing a. Uh, 
either 24 to 70 or 1635. Either way, uh, technical details, but yeah, that's elementary. Right, the so common theme with them is nature. nature. <laughs> Except for those two, the, in, in two, the three. Yeah. Or if you're counting the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting the Eiffel Tower and the... Um, Eiffel Tower, Urban Dreams, the Lantern. Yeah, and the Lantern. Yeah. Either way, the common theme is still, of course, the colors is very earthy tone. Yeah. And, oh, oh uh, by the way, the reason we're talking about elementary OS in terms of, uh, in terms of their, uh, wallpapers as a, as a collection, as, as, as a, as a curated piece is because of the nature of elementary OS. Like they want to have mm-hmm. very tight, it, it seems like they want to have very tight sort of, con- uh, integration of their entire desktop. And I guess a big part of that is the images. So we have to look at it as a set. Of course. Because of, course. of the, the underlying philosophy behind elementary OS. Yep. And um, now we go into Antergos. Antergos. Which is a little more chaotic. 